Are you a Twitter user? Well, Twitter's announcement this week that it will delete tweets that break local laws has the Internet buzzing and many users worried. Twitter says it used to censor its content worldwide, but it will now only censor tweets in particular areas where particular laws get in the way. Even so, that's not sitting well with political dissidents or advocates of free speech. Rob Esquiza joins us now from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He's managing editor of the technology and science website Boing Boing. Thanks so much for talking with us. Let me ask you, how worried are you? Because as best I can tell, this is a change in policy that actually makes things, if anything, freer uh, on the, in the Twitterverse. Well, what Twitter's planning is no worse than what other social networks already do. And it's doing as much as it can to minimize the effect of what it's going to do by posting details of taken down tweets to chillingeffects.org. And it's shown itself to be uh, conscientious about warning users in the past about it. Uh, the problem has been, or what, what people are upset by, is that Twitter's always touted itself as an international defender of free speech. So actively becoming an agent of censorship, um, you know, uh, to doing business with specific foreign governments, it seems to people to be a U-turn. What would the impact be in, in, in the context of, say, the Arab Spring or the Occupy Wall Street movement? Uh, would things have really been different then? Well, it's not clear because there's all sorts of things that people will still be able to do to circumvent the changes. Uh, it's very specifically targeted towards uh, local to like regional concerns. Like a tweet will become unavailable in that country, uh, but it won't be unavailable worldwide. So it's really not entirely clear what the negative consequences are. And I think the outrage is generally about uh, Twitter's history of boasting about how useful it's, it is as a service to dissidents and protesters, when now it's kind of talking about, you know, the, the contours and limits of free speech. Well, there has been a backlash, but I'm curious about whether Twitter is so big and so powerful that uh, any kind of backlash is irrelevant. Uh, most people are going to continue to tweet if they've been tweeting in the past, and only a small number of people are, are potentially going to notice, I would think. Well, sure, but 99% of people who use Twitter aren't using it for political activism. But the, the, the issue is, is that the 1% or even less than 1% who do use Twitter to organize political events, uh, who communicate in oppressive regimes, uh, those are the people who we're worried about here. And uh, many of Twitter's general users, even though they will never be directly affected by these kind of censorship measures, uh, they like to, f to think that Twitter is uh, more free speechy than it seems to be now. Well, so let me ask you just finally, is this a tempest in a teapot or... or uh... I hesitate to say the tweet part. Um, I, I don't think it's a tempest in a teapot, but what's going to happen is Twitter's going to find that it, how it, when it starts doing business in foreign countries, it won't be able to pick and choose which foreign laws it obeys. It wants to obey the censorship requirements of local laws, but other companies have had to do more than that. In England, for example... Uh, they, courts can apply what's called a super injunction, which could mean that Twitter can't post its um, censorship to chillingeffects.org because it will be banned from disclosing that it's been censored. The truth In is, India, I guess this is all so new, we don't really know exactly how it's going to play out. But uh, Rob Esquiza of Boing Boing, thank you so much.